Hey y'all, uh, this video will be about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the third member of the Trinity. I will say there has been a lot of confusion in the church about the Holy Spirit. I remember when I was growing up, I was always confused as to why I never heard any teaching about the Holy Spirit. Um, I mostly grew up in Baptist churches or non-denominational churches. Then I went to a Christian college, which was... I don't, they didn't really have a denomination necessarily, but it certainly wasn't Pentecostal. It was probably more like Baptist. Now I consider myself to be a Baptist-costal, which means I'm half Baptist, half Pentecostal. I believe in the studying of the Word, definitely. You should read the Bible every day if you can. Obviously you can read a physical Bible. I like reading it on my phone. Openbible.com is great. Um, you can look up certain topics or subjects. Anyways, um, who is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is the dictator of your life. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. The Holy Spirit should be the dictator of your life. The Holy Spirit is referred to as a comforter. So I've always seen the Holy Spirit as feminine, which um, man at the beginning, God made man and women in his image. So I think men reflect God the Father and women reflect the Holy Spirit. Um, yeah, so if you're wondering what the Holy Spirit's like, she's, it's, I think it's a she. Um, yeah, there's a book called The Shack, and the movie The Shack is really good, and they depict the Holy Spirit as a woman, so that's interesting. Uh, the Holy Spirit likes to talk <laughs> like a woman, so I've had the Holy Spirit talking to me for quite some time now, probably about five years. Um, me and the Holy Spirit are good friends. Sometimes I feel like she's kind of like a sibling or, or like a sister, like an older sister or something. So that's been interesting. <laughs> I never had a sister until I started talking to the Holy Spirit. Um, I used to be afraid of the Holy Spirit actually when I was Baptist or non-denominational. Why? Because the Holy Spirit seems kind of scary, like in certain churches when people pray in tongues or they run up and down the aisles or they wave flags. I was always like, is that all the Holy Spirit? I don't know. I know that some people can just imitate tongues, you know, they act like they're doing it, but they're not. There's also such a thing as demonic tongues, which you should be careful of. I always heard if you want tongues bad enough, be careful because Satan can give you tongues too. Um, but for sure, anybody who does have a legit gift of tongues from the Holy Spirit has a connection to the Holy Spirit, which is great. So I got tongues five years ago. And I remember <laughs> the whole reason why I got it, partly, was I talked to a coworker about how I wanted more spiritual gifts. I was like, I want the spiritual gift of healing. And she was like, well, you have to get the gift of tongues first because that opens the door to all the other supernatural gifts. And I was like, really? Okay. And I believed her, which I don't really know. I mean, that might have just been her opinion. But anyway, so then I was going to a Pentecostal church and I was talking to this lady and she was like, I was like, I really want the gift of tongues. So she was praying for me to receive it. But then she said, I feel like God's saying you have to get baptized again. And, um, anyways, so I got baptized again. This was like five years ago. Shortly after that, I got the gift of tongues. And so the Holy Spirit, it, whether you have tongues or not, the Holy Spirit is kind of like probably that still small voice inside your head that you refer to as your conscience, um, your Jiminy Cricket. It's the voice that's warning you, pleading with you, making you feel guilty <laughs> about things, convicting you. The Holy Spirit brings conviction. Jesus said that the Holy Spirit will bring to your remembrance everything that he said. So if you've read the whole Bible, the Holy Spirit will bring verses back up into your memory when you need it. Like, for example, if you're writing, like when I was writing my books, oh, all of you should go buy my book titled The Holy Spirit by Lisa Vedrick on Amazon. It's actually the longest book that I wrote. It's probably about 150 pages, but I said a lot about the Holy Spirit. I have a lot to say about her. <laughs> and 
I think it's important, well, I would really like you all to read it, but I think it's important that we all fully understand the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is the member of the Trinity of the Godhead that really relates to humans. So usually God the Father doesn't speak to people, or if he does, it's on rare occasions. It, when it happened in the Bible, people fell down on their face when they heard the voice of God the Father. So it's usually, when you're hearing God, it's not God the Father, and it's usually not Jesus. It's usually the Holy Spirit. Um, <clears throat> anyways, can we talk to Jesus? Yes, I will say it's a different voice, which might seem weird to you. Which, this is actually a recent thing. In the last six months, I started talking to Jesus, too. I will just say, for any of you who are curious, Jesus' voice sounds distinctly more like a man's voice. The Holy Spirit sounds definitely more like a woman's voice. And what's confusing is that they sometimes have different opinions on things. Which, someone might say, oh, you're hearing voices, that's demons. I don't think so. If the, if the voice is giving you good advice... And they're trying to tell you how to love people, or if it's wise counsel, it's not a demon. <laughs> Demons are like evil, and they want you to hurt yourself and hurt other people, or feel bad about yourself, or hate other people, blah, blah, blah. So if there's a voice telling you any of that stuff, it's a demon. But if it's a voice giving you wise counsel and telling you to be nice to people, uh, ways that you can change the world make the world better, it's God. Anyways, yeah, and then some people might say, well, how do you know it's not just yourself talking to yourself? I guess it can, it can be hard to differentiate. Um, it can be hard to differentiate. I will say, when I first started hearing God, I realized that it was God or the Holy Spirit because it was things that I wouldn't have naturally come up with. You know? So... Like, we're only so smart, you know. All us humans, we're finite human beings. Our brains only work so well. but So we can only come up with certain things. <laughs> but God, obviously, is infinite, the most intelligent being alive, obviously. So if we get an idea that's like a, an epiphany, like a genius idea, it's probably from God. And I think that a lot of people maybe get those ideas and they think that it's themselves and they're like, oh, I'm a genius. I'm like, well, how do you know that was you? <laughs> maybe it was God that gave you that epiphany. Like any invention that's ever happened, it probably was the Holy Spirit that caused that. You know, like the invention of the light bulb or the internet or whatever. But whoever invented such things probably thought that they came up with the idea. But how, how do they really know? Anyways, but yes, I will say be careful about voices in your head because obviously demons can talk to you too. Um, if it's a positive voice, it's God. If it's a gentle, friendly voice, it's God. If it's an evil, mean voice, it's a demon. <sighs> Anyways, and I will say, okay, what are demons? Most people think demons are fallen angels but demons can also be just disembodied spirits i do think that it's possible that demons can be other people invading your mind which i've heard of this before telepathy in the garden people usually think that telepathy was um an option that that's how humans communicated originally that's how angels communicate i've heard but um anyways I do think it's possible for other humans to communicate with you in your head and watch out for that. <laughs> Usually it's part of witchcraft. So if someone is communicating with you in your head, they're probably a witch. And if they're really mean, don't listen to them for the most part or pray for them or get God involved in the conversation. Um, it is annoying that witches can have that capability, but... I have experienced this, and pray for me about that. <laughs> um, yeah. Ah, it's an interesting fact of life. Anyways, watch out for that. Hopefully you don't know any witches. Hopefully you don't have any witches trying to mess with you. But you never know. You never know. You never know who's a witch and who's not. And just 
um, pray for that person and get God involved in talking to them. So, anyways, what else should I say about the Holy Spirit? Don't be freaked out about the Holy Spirit. Don't be freaked out about talking to the Holy Spirit. Because either way, I think that we're all talking to someone all day, but we just think we're talking to ourselves. You know, but wouldn't it be so much better to talk to the Holy Spirit? Yes, it would be. Yes, it would be. If you talk to anybody all day, you should be talking to the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is God, and God knows way more than you know. And you need to constantly be asking the Holy Spirit for advice on what to do, you know. The Holy Spirit has helped me a lot to be a mom, to give me advice on what I should do, you know, minute by minute. Um, the Holy Spirit can help us manage our money, be wiser with that, with our health, with our fitness, just everything. Everything that matters in your life, the Holy Spirit can help you to do the wisest thing. You know, 